a triple overtime thriller against Cinco Ranch, but I'm sure that took a lot out of you. And now uh, you're coming off a, a loss to Beaumont Westbrook, 66 to 48. And you had to come in here for the second game of the day in this gym. How's your team's energy level? Uh, we're going to find out in about 25, 30 minutes here. Um, I think they're a little tired, but it's, I mean, it's what you do at this time of year is coming off of a break, Christmas tournaments, everyone doing the same thing. So we're not going to have any excuses. We're going to play. Um, our kids will be fine. And it's a lot like AAU for them. So they're probably used to it. <laughs> Yeah, probably, probably so. And let me just tell you, in, in my experience as an educator, I teach fifth and sixth graders, and I had early morning cafeteria duty for, for a couple of months when I first started. And I hated it because the kids came in grumpy. I prefer to be the car rider guy at the end of the day when Absolutely. everybody's kind of happy that the day's over. Absolutely. So what kind of demeanor did you see on the faces of your players when you first saw them this morning? Um, well, you know, it's typical teenagers at 8 o'clock in the morning. They're a little dragging, but they're ready to play. They're excited to play again. Um, yesterday was exciting for them. Um, you know, it's, they're playing basketball, which is what they like to do. Um, another chance for us to go out and get better and compete together as a team. So the kids are excited. I mean, and, you know, once the ball goes up, everything will be okay, and they'll get back to playing basketball. Getting better is what this tournament basketball is all about. My final question for you, uh, I know I'm going to be asking you about this young man as uh, the season goes on, but you got T.J. Ford's son, and how valuable is he to your team? He's extremely valuable. Um, he does a really good job. of. He, you know, obviously, he has a lot of playing experience for us. He's probably one of our most experienced players. we got a really young team, so... Uh, with him out there, he kind of can, you know, see and feel things that others can. And his value, I mean, obviously he's a really good player offensively and defensively, but his leadership that he provides for our team is, is immeasurable. You can't put a, a number or, you know, quantify how valuable he is from that standpoint. All right, that's Darren Johnson of Ridgepoint, and we will be with you later today. Uh, do you know which game uh, you'll face the winner of who and who in the afternoon game? We will face the winner or loser of Channel View and Brian, I believe. That's what it is. So if it's the winner, it's at 3 or a little bit later. And if it's the loser, then you'd be at the 1230 game, I believe. That is correct. Yes, sir. All right. So write that down. If you're out there listening, write it down because it's, it's hard to keep track of tournaments. And they might not start at, start at the exact time where they're supposed to. Okay, we'll continue. Thank you, Coach Johnson. And we're just a few minutes away from tip-off here on VitefortBend.com. Okay, fans, I realized that during that interview I said this game would tip off in just a few minutes. Well, it has already tipped off. You've missed the first 25 seconds Westfield taking on Ridgepoint. Ridgepoint had uh, victory in the opening tap, but they didn't score. And so the first basket of the game goes to DeBrian Broomfield of Westfield. I'm Roger Smith. Patrick Kinnick is to my left. And Patrick, I want to thank you so much for what you've done to write down rosters. You know, tournaments, it's sometimes hard to be prepared for the broadcast. And we didn't even know Westfield was the Ridgepoint opponent starting when we walked into the gym through the fog and the late uh, just after dawn era or, or hours well here we are in a unfoggy gym yeah it's uh, very clear we're up top and ridgepoint had a second possession now that we've kind of gotten all the introductory pleasantries out of the way ridgepoint missed its second shot and it was one and done as westfield got the rebound back down the floor and Jeremiah Cooper, their big man, tried one, got fouled, and missed it. Now he has two free throws, and he misses the first of those two free throws. Baytown Lee is kind of an old school school because it was built back in the either early 70s. Actually, it was built in the 60s because we saw those old dusty plaques of who was the best player right. in 1965. So I guess... Didn't he miss the first free throw? Yet he, the scoreboard says two to nothing. He, he missed both of them. They had scored a basket earlier, Roger. Oh, that's right. Yep. That's right. Okay. Thank you. I didn't have coffee in the hospitality room. That's the problem. Now, Ridgepoint scores. They get their first basket of the game as it's Logan Menifee. 
His big brother played tight end and played baseball for Rich Point way back when. Now Westfield in this 2-2 to -two game, you're going to get a much better play-by-play -play the rest of the way as their main point guard, Dijon Palomo, has the ball. He was facing close-in defense, and now they kind of back off of him. The guy playing him is Chauncey Shaw of Ridge Point and pulling up at the right elbow and off glass good by Dijon Palomo, and it's now 4-2. to two. These Westfield Mustangs on top of the Ridge Point Panthers. There goes Dijon Palomo. Gets the ball in the hands of Ronaldo, I'm sorry, of Terrence Ford. And I misidentified. So uh, here we go. We're going to do better now. Chauncey Shaw has it. Stops at the right elbow. Bounce pass down low to Menifee. And it goes out of bounds. Last touched by Westfield. And that was nice defensive hustle there. De Brian Broomfield was right on top of Menifee. Shaw is going to throw it in from under the basket at which the Panthers are shooting. Now Terrence Ford, the son of T.J. Ford, the former Texas Longhorn and NBA star. Now they send it over there to Dorian Hayes. Hayes top of the key. Gives it over to Shaw. Kills his dribble in the free throw circle. And now ah, there's a long range three off the front iron by Hayes. And another one and done possession for Ridge Point. They trail four to two. And here goes... The big slash to the hoop by DeBrian Broomfield, and he is fouled hard on the play. And I think it was Menifee who got him. Good morning, Patrick. You're you're still over there doing a lot of hard work for for the both of us. And good morning, Roger. Hopefully, I'm gonna do better going forward as the first free throw is missed by Broomfield, and now we have a substitution. Menifee goes out, and he's replaced by Jaden Jinx. A 6'5 sophomore. If somebody's a sophomore and they're 6'5, are they going to get taller? Well, that's a good chance. That'd be great. Second free throw is good. One out of two were good, so it's 5-2. to two. Westfield now leading Ridge Point. James Farr into the game for the Panthers. And now there is Shaw driving the right side of the free throw lane. Cannot get free. Now T.J. Ford has it. Holding the ball over his head, now dribbling to his left, and we have a whistle and possibly a foul away from the ball. It's a foul on Westfield, and where Patrick and I are positioned is well above the floor. We're about 20 feet up, I would think, and so we don't always hear when the officials call out the number of the player who fouled. T.J. Ford, quick catch and shoot from the right corner. It's up, it's no good, fight for the rebound, and Westfield comes away with it again. It's Dexter Smith. And he pulls up from two-point land just inside the arc and hits to make it 7-2 Westfield. There goes Shaw into the forecourt for Ridge Point, the home team wearing the white uniforms with the purple numerals and letters outlined in black. Now from just beyond the free throw line, Dorian Hayes puts it up. He misses, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line for two shots. Westfield is in the spring ISD. They're the Mustangs. They have great football teams year in and year out. And last year was perhaps their best basketball year as they were 30-2. and two. But coming into this game, they have a losing record of 7-10. and 10. First free throw by Dorian Hayes of Ridgepoint was missed. As you heard us talk about during the Next Level Urgent Care Countdown to Tip-Off show, Coach Darren Johnson enjoyed watching his team Get a triple overtime win over Cinco Ranch, but they were pretty much spent when they played Beaumont Westbrook and lost that game yesterday evening or late afternoon, 66 to 48. Westfield has it again, and there's a bomb from Dexter Smith, his second straight hoop. And that makes it a 10 to two game. That was a three pointer. There goes Shaw hard to the hoop and he's fouled and I don't know if it was Dexter Smith or Jeremiah Cooper, but both of them seem to get their money's worth. I think you could have called that foul on either well, of I'm them. I'm not sure if they call the foul. I think they just knocked it out of bounds. They call it a legal block. Well, they, they got it for free and got their money's worth, if you know what I mean. So Ridgepoint inbounded the ball, and again it is knocked out of bounds by, knocked out of bounds by Westfield. So the Panthers inbounding at the baseline to our left. Just into the game is Dexter, Dexter Delahosi. Throws it into TJ Ford. Drives in. Fade away short. And the rebound to Westfield as Jaton Slim Kofer 
swallows it up. I don't know if Slim is a nickname or, or a first surname. Now it's Dutch Raspberry, one of Patrick's new favorite player names. And they're playing well inside, and there's a, not a big thundering dunk by Jeremiah Cooper. In fact, the rim almost rejected him, but he got it to go down through. Patrick, we're going to take a quick break and be back. It is 12-2, Ridgepoint off to a slow start as they take on Westfield. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. Doc. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Ridgepoint had the basketball trailing 12-2, but... They go up with a shot and miss. It was a little fade away by Sanchez, Sebastian Sanchez, but they do get a steal, and here comes Ridgepoint, two on two, and a foul before they can finish off the fast break. Jaden Jinks had the ball in his hands, but just as he looked like he was about to go up and lay one in, the teammate who passed it to him was fouled. So Ridgepoint will inbound underneath the, bit, uh, the basket at which they're shooting. Jinx has the ball on the inbounds pass, and now it's in the hands of Dexter Delahosi. There are two Dexters in this game, Patrick, both uh, one on each team. Now TJ Ford dribbling between the rings, side to side, drives into the paint, goes up, flips it off to Jinx, and it goes between his feet, but Westfield tapped it before it went beyond the baseline. It's still gonna be Panther basketball. Quickly inbound to Jinx and a nice layup. He got good position on the man who was guarding him. That was Deshari Thigpen. It's now 12 to four. Ridgepoint already needing to climb out of a hole. Inside it is Raspberry. Dutch scores again. And that ups the lead to 10 once more. It is 14 to four. Westfield on top of Ridgepoint. TJ Ford dribbles the ball. Now passes off to Dorian Hayes, now top of the key. It says Cole Veon is number 15, but I know Cole Veon and that ain't him. We got a problem, Patrick. <laughs> uh, Cole Veon, uh, I'm not even sure that he is in, in uniform, so I'm not sure who 15 is. Ridge, Ridge Point inbounds and Dorian Hayes goes up strong in a big crowd underneath a basket and draws a foul and Hayes will go to the free throw line. I was trying to look at some statistics on what Ridgepoint has done. Patrick and Dorian Hayes, I believe, averages 14 points per game as he misses the first free throw, so it's still 14 to four. He's missed all three of his free throws so far tonight, or this morning. Yes. Uh, it is morning, right? Well, it seems like <laughs> night was... Uh, what happened to the night? It's all gone, and now we're awake again. <laughs> he did hit the second free throw. Ridgepoint trailing 14 to five. Thank you, Ridgepoint fans, for waking up early with us. We'll have another game for you later this afternoon. Slashing to the hoop and off the glass is DeBrian Broomfield of Westfield. Broomfield of Westfield, that's interesting. 16 to five is the score, and Ridgepoint is trying to get the offense going against a bigger Westfield team, and that'll work. Dexter Delahosi slashes to the hoop and scores off the glass. He drew contact. I was kind of hoping it would be two and a foul as Gene Peterson, Gene Peterson, a former Rockets voice, used to say. Now Westfield on the attack again. Three-pointer from the right corner. It's Slim Kofer. It's no good. Rebound fought for, and Westfield comes away with it. Nice effort. Dutch Raspberry gets the ball in the hands of Broomfield. 
Now it's back out to Dexter Smith. Dexter hits nothing, put up a two-point try from about uh, 12 feet and missed everything. So an old-fashioned air ball. Sebastian Sanchez is in the game now for Ridgepoint. They had that triple overtime game yesterday against Cinco Ranch and then finished up. They, after beating Cinco Ranch, they got beaten pretty soundly by Beaumont Westbrook. Had to drive on back to Missouri, Missouri City and be on this floor for the second game of the day. Jinx has it between the rings. Now cross-court pass. Gets it to Dexter Delahosi. Drives in. Had plenty of room. But a little bit too hard off the glass, no good. And here comes Westfield on the run. There goes Raspberry. And he rattles it off the glass and down for another point. This game's getting out of hand. It is 18 to 7. Westfield on top. TJ Ford with his pro jock DNA is going to be hard pressed to score a big, big bundle of points. But that might be what the Panthers need him to do. He went to the hoop. There was a whistle. I guess they call him for an offensive well, foul. Well, there was an offensive foul on the pick. Uh, it was on Sebastian Sanchez. I guess he called it an illegal pick. I don't know who they called it on. Let's see here. Sanchez, just a sophomore. Whenever I hear Sebastian, I think of that little uh, the crab in The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Some of the great songs in a movie soundtrack. I think of the guy who played Mr. French on uh, yeah. Family Affair. Family Affair. Family Se Affair, right? Sebastian Cabot. Cabot, yes. And there was a historical figure before the actor by the same name. All right, here comes Westfield again attacking the rim from the right side. A guy who just entered the game. It's number 21, and we don't have a number 21 on our roster. And we were assured that this was an updated roster. Yes, we certainly <laughs> were. All right. That's the end of the first quarter, a forgettable one for the Ridgepoint Panthers, but they've got three quarters to make up the deficit on the Westfield Mustangs. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Okay, quarter number two. About to start in just a second. And now it is underway. Roger Smith and Patrick Kinnick here with you on VibeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint and Westfield tournament ba basketball from Baytown. So the Mustangs get, uh, get it first, and it looked like Dexter Smith might have dragged his back foot. They didn't call him for traveling, though. And there's Jaden Jinx with a nice defensive play. He almost got it away from big Jeremiah Cooper, but unfortunately, as he tapped the ball, it went off his hand and touched the baseline. Westfield will inbound to our right. Quick inbound to Cooper, puts it up. He's just too big and pretty strong as well, and he lays it in to make it 20 to seven. It's like playing Westfield in football, which I hope Ridgepoint doesn't have to do anytime soon. Westfield's got a good program. They came within 28, 28 to 21 of Duncanville Whoa. before Duncanville beat North Shore by that same score in the state championship game of Class 6A Division I. Ridgepoint turned it over, and now Westfield has it back, leading 20 to 7, and they're taking their time as Dijon Palomo is dribbling near the center court circle. Nobody's coming out on defense. Ridgepoint playing a 2-3 zone, and now T.J. Ford, Jr., comes out on Palomo, who passes off, gets it to Dexter Smith. Now they're playing catch along the perimeter. Raspberry now all the way back to the other side to Smith. 
And now they're uh, nearly dropping the ball was DeBrian Broomfield. They've got a small lineup out there except for Jeremiah Cooper. And there is a three-pointer from the top of the key. No good. Rebound fought for, and Ridgepoint came away with it. It ended up in the hands of Dorian Hayes. And it's a foul on Westfield. Yep, uh, big Jeremiah Cooper got called for that foul, and that shot attempt ro rolled around and out on that three-pointer. Lucky for uh, the Panthers there. Here comes Ridgepoint quickly down the floor, and a little two-pointer along the baseline by Michael Kazamervis is off the front iron. No good. A lot of Ridgepoint shots have come up short this morning. Now a lot of energy and quickness as Westfield has the ball and moves it around the perimeter looking for the open shot. And so far they found a lot of open ones, but there is a hot pass that goes out of bounds. Was it tipped by Ridgepoint? I don't think so. So the Panthers basically force a turnover as a ball that looked like it had been shot out of a cannon went through the hands of Dutch Raspberry. And the uh, coach Billy Goffney was uh, looking for a deflection on that, but they had pretty good ball movement on that that sequence. All right, Ridgepoint trying to spread out the defense of the larger Westfield Mustangs team. And now Dorian Hayes driving up to the left elbow, shoots a two off the side of the rim, no good, and Cooper swallows up the rebound. It's been one and done every time Ridgepoint misses, just about every time anyway. Westfield quickly back down the floor, and there it goes Raspberry, started to make his way down the baseline, but then he pulled back, passes it over to Palomo. And he's between the rings now, way back during near the center court circle. And that 2 3 zone defense by Ridgepoint now becomes a 2 2 and 1 as TJ Ford is the one guarding Palomo. Throws it to the corner, and the three pointer is no good. Dexter Smith rebound TJ Ford of Ridgepoint, streaking down the floor, going all the way to the rack. Puts it up. He's fouled, and the basket counts. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, sometimes you need that first one to, to just get things going. That was a close call. They called it a block on, I guess it was on Broomfield. Looked like he had pretty good position there, but uh, we're not down right there on the floor. So Ford has a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Yes, and his dad had quite a few of those in college and in the professional ranks. You know, uh, I haven't really... Now they call the technical foul or oh. something here, Roger. Oh, really? How about that? I'm not sure what the call was. Well, it's going to be T.J. Ford shooting at least one technical foul shot, and the way things have been going today, it rolls off no good. And now it'll be Sebastian Sanchez to shoot the second technical. I don't see that very often if some guy is up there... Well, I guess uh, the first shot was by Ford to try and complete the three-point play, and he missed that one. Sanchez hit the first one, missed the second one. So they ended up getting one free throw out of the three. Yeah, that's not so good. But they do get the ball, and they trail by 10, and the Panthers are trying to get themselves on track here. All right, so they're down 20 to 10. If they score here, it's down to a single-digit game, and incrementally they can make their comeback tj ford gets a pick from casamervis stops near the top of the key still dribbling drives to the right elbow now backs up shoots the two just inside the arc and hits it it is 20 to 12. he was bound and determined to get the get a basket there wasn't he he certainly was westfield working the slow offense they've kind of gone with the half court style broomfield sends it all the way to the other side to palomo now he gets the ball right back. Now Palomo has it, shoots from three-point land, got hit in the face. He scored. That hurts Ridgepoint, but Ridgepoint is lucky they didn't get called for a foul. I think it was Gabriel Bro who came in, and probably not intentionally, but he did. Part of his arm hit the shooter in the face, and now Palomo gets a steal, going all the way, stops, kicks it back out. Three-pointer on the way from Slim Clofer, and he hits it. Six straight points after Ridgepoint had gotten within eight. Wow. And now they're down by 14. That happens fast. To 12. Sure does. Life comes at you fast. T.J. Ford pulling up from three-point land off the back iron. No good. Rebound batted out of bounds. Last touch by Westfield. 
You know, Ridgepoint just doesn't have a whole lot of size this year. It would be, they would have a little bit more of a powerful presence inside if Cole Veyon was here today. But sometimes you have players miss tournament games. Kazimervis took the inbounds pass, shot it quickly, missed, started to get it back, but it trickled back between his feet and rolled out of bounds. Things have just not been going the Ridgepoint Panthers way thus far. 26 to 12 is the score. And now we have a timeout taken by Westfield. We'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. All right, we resume action. Still a 14-point Westfield lead. They took that timeout, and now they look like they're running the four corners and just going to wait until the defense comes out on them. Both of these teams are going to play another game today. If Ridgepoint loses, they play at 12.30. If they win, they play at just after 3 o'clock. Fade away, two-pointer good by Westfield. Juton Slim Clofer makes it 28 to 12, and this one is getting away from the Ridgepoint Panthers. TJ Ford between the rings, sends it to the corner. Sebastian Sanchez spins, goes up, draws the foul, and I think that foul, Patrick, is going to be called on the floor rather than a shooting foul, except... Wait a minute, I see him going to the line. Well, let's see. Well, Some the officials aren't sure. One of the officials is talking to the official scorer at the table, and it is going to be, I guess they're in the bonus, so this is a one and one, I would think. Yeah, I guess they got nine team fouls, so this is a one and one. It, I think you were right, Roger. He was... He was uh, fouled before he went up for the shot. Let's see what it, what the referees hold up here. If they hold up the two or the one, they're toweling up a little sweat down there first. Yes, and, and by the way, speaking of sweat, there wasn't any in the gym at Brazosport, Patrick, on Tuesday. I have to tell you about that. That can be our halftime show, just describing the conditions. As Sanchez hits the first free throw, and it was a one and one because they were going to rebound it had it been a miss. Second free throw, short. Rebound, Jeremiah Cooper of Westfield, and it's 28-13, to 13, and here come the Mustangs trying to add to their lead. We've had one tie at 2-2, two to two, but Westfield has not trailed at any point in this game. Palomo kills his dribble, throws it all the way across the court to Broomfield, Drives in, puts up a wild shot, no good. Rebound Ford for Ridgepoint. Here comes TJ right through the middle. Splits two defenders, scoops it from the left side. Cooper blocks him, but Gabriel Bro runs down the rebound for Ridgepoint, and he shoots a two-point fadeaway just from the left of the lane, and it's good to make it 28 to 15. Here comes Ridgepoint. Slim Clofer with the ball in his hands. Now hands it off to Palomo. Now they send it to Cooper. Free throw circle, down low they get it to Slim Clofer, then back out to the corner, and a three-pointer in and out by Broomfield. And the rebound grabbed by Ridge Points, James Farr. TJ Ford splitting two defenders, putting up a big teardrop rainbow, rainmaker shot, and it was no good, rebound Westfield. Again, one and done for the Ridge Point offense. They've had a hard time getting offensive rebounds. Westfield attacking again. Dexter Smith pulls up near the free throw line. No good. Jaden Jinks out battles Cooper for the rebound. Now TJ Ford brings it up the far sideline. 28 to 15, Ridgepoint trailing Spring Westfield. TJ Ford moves to the left. Bro thinks about the three. He just hit a two. He might try to, the three just to see what it's like. Here comes Sebastian Sanchez into the paint. Stops and a wild shot. 
Bounces off the glass and the side of the rim, no good. And the rebound to Jaton Shim, Slim Clofer of Westfield. He hands it to Broomfield. Sanchez guarding him. Second quarter has gone by quickly. We're close to the one minute mark. Into Broomfield, a nice little dish by Broomfield. I'm sorry, he dished it to Jeremiah Cooper for the two hand slam. It is 30 to 15. Bro has it on the left wing. Sanchez, three from the left corner. No good, rebound, Jinx. Got away with a push off. Now he's moving in, a little baby hook and Cooper blocks him. And the rebound is tapped out to Palomo. Cooper, 45. sorry Roger, Cooper has been a, a force inside. It's hard for Rich Point to get anything inside today. As you had mentioned earlier. Yeah, he's blocking shots, he's getting rebounds, he's doing it all. Here's Palomo, pulls up at the right elbow. His two pointer is no good. Jinx did a good job boxing out Cooper right there. So Ridge Point has it, 23 seconds to go in the half. Bro driving in through the paint. They gave him an alley, but here came Cooper with help defense to block him. And now Westfield bringing it back the other way. Broomfield into the lane, kicks it back out to Cooper. Now Paloma, they back out, nine seconds. I think they're gonna play for the last shot. Duh, I couldn't have, couldn't have said anything more obvious. Broomfield pulls up, two-pointer in and out. Bro grabs the rebound, and a forgettable first half for the Ridge Point Panthers as they trail 30 to 15. VibeFortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County High School sports are brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, Next Level Urgent Care, the Needville Insurance Agency, First Tire and Automotive, and Exwood and X, I try to say Equitable and Xfinity at the same time and Xfinity. Xfinity Mobile, the best kept secret in wireless. All right, Patrick and I will be back to tell you how I almost died broadcasting basketball indoors on Tuesday. 30 to 15, Westfield leads Ridge Point. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Needville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. Welcome back to halftime of the first part of our doubleheader of Ridgepoint Boys Basketball as we are enjoying the holiday week between Christmas and New Year's. I'm Roger Smith, he's Patrick Kinnick. Patrick, you're the ultimate multitasker and you have some scoring uh, credits to give for the first half of this game where Westfield leads Ridge Point 30 to 15. You are giving me a little bit more credit than I deserve, I think, but here we go. For the Ridge Point Panthers, Sebastian Sanchez, two points on two free throws, two for four from the line. Uh, oh, Della Hosey. Della Hosey. Hosey. Della Hosey has two points. Hayes has three. He has uh, one for four from the line. Yeah, otherwise he'd have a little higher total there. Bro has two. Terrence, four. Terrence Ford with four. And Jinx has two. That's your Panthers scoring for the Mustangs of Westfield. 
Dutch. Dutch. Raspberry with four. Dexter Smith with five. Broomfield leads all scores with seven. Slim Clofer with five. Palomo with three. And Jeremiah Cooper, the big guy for uh, the Muskangs, has six, but he also has several blocks and lots of rebounds. He's really been a force inside thus far here in the first half. It's 30 to 15, the halftime score. And Roger, the Panthers have to have a little bit of strategy going on at halftime to try to get back into the ball game. Well, I hope they're, they're not just, um, when you think about it, even though these guys are teenagers and they're good athletes, you consider that they played two games um, yesterday and they go to triple overtime with Cinco Ranch and then they play a game against Beaumont Westbrook that I believe started about five o'clock yesterday evening and then they play that game and they um by the way i'm thank you patrick for letting me are know you, that the sign was about to fall off our little balcony are you perch suggesting here. that they're tired they might be tired because you know you gotta you probably let them eat after they lose to beaumont westbrook and they get back to missouri city uh maybe they get into their homes at 9 30 i'm guessing and then they got to get up early and come back out here and so it's it's not easy to do and of course westfield has to travel too it's not uh, a real quick trip from spring and to uh to here in baytown and they also had two games yesterday correct they sure did might have been at slightly different times and so on but yeah you never you never know what the the, the uh x factors are sometimes in these games and it is early but it's early for everybody but there's one excuse that nobody has in this gym today, and that is cold. Yeah, because you, you have to tell us how you oh, almost I gotta, I gotta, did not survive yesterday's well, not ball yesterday, game or day before. Tuesday. Tuesday. Let's. Okay. So you ready it's, for that? It's a perfect storm when you think that most school systems, including Brazosport ISD, had their last day of school on the 16th of December, and so. Nobody has had any reason to go in the building at Brazosport High School for any reason for an almost two-week period. And the weekend of Christmas, we had some brutally cold temperatures. You are Mr. Wisconsin. You are familiar with 16 degrees, but that's what we had. Right. A couple of overnight lows that right. were just brutal. And, of course, there was never any need to turn on the furnace, furnace at Brazosport High School. So... My task was to go out there and broadcast two games, one involving Kempner, which they won over Alvin, and another one involving Willow Ridge, which they lost to Texas City. But you know how uh, I like to comment on fashion. Some of these guys in the NBA, namely Kevin Durant, I don't watch a lot of NBA anymore, but I see him wearing that little, uh, what was Beavis and Butthead would talk about, Cornholio, when they'd pull their, their shirt up over their head. Yeah. Well, in these warm NBA arenas, you got these guys walking around in these little, not hoodies, but hoods. They look stupid, okay? They look stupid. But at Brazosport on Tuesday. You wish you had one. We, we <laughs> needed that, plus a hoodie, plus a beanie. I mean, it was, it was really, really cold. And when I left the building late in the afternoon, they still hadn't turned on the furnace. They couldn't find the maintenance guy. He was probably in the Bahamas or something. Well, you know, but, what's interesting is uh, it seemed like years ago, <laughs> when you say years ago, that must mean you're kind of old. But anyway, didn't it seem like there was just like a switch you turned on? I mean, did you actually have to have a special person to come in and turn something on? It yeah. seems like you could just, oh, there's the switch. You just flick the switch. Yeah, it's just, there's the <laughs> thermostat. Crank it up to 80 <laughs> until everybody's comfortable. It's like television nowadays. You know, you should, you should be able to just turn this, turn a knob on and the television would turn on. Now you got to have various remote control things and so on and so forth. And you don't even know where you're going after that. And time. I am sure that you are familiar <laughs> with the teenage eye roll of course. When, when you can't figure out how to make a, right. use the remote to make the TV What's do something. What's funny, though, is when it doesn't work for me and then they do it, it doesn't work for them either. That's well, funny. That is funny <laughs> when that happens, for sure. So let's see. I want to tell everybody what we're going to do tomorrow. 
And we've gonna, we're going to have a girls-boys doubleheader at Austin High School. The Austin girls, who are leading District 26A, will play a non-district game against South Houston. And then, Patrick, it'll be yours and my first look ever at the Randall Lions. They're the new Lamar Consolidated ISD High School, and they're going to take on the Austin boys in the second half of our doubleheader. So we'll have a noon game, basically, and about a 2 o'clock game. Girls first, as it should be. Of Ladies course, first. Of course. And uh, then the boys. So Coach Christopher O'War is the head coach of the Austin boys, and LaQuisha Dickerson is not only the head coach of the Austin girls, but also the girls' campus athletic coordinator there at the school in peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek, it as opposed be, to the hard scrabble streets of Siena. <laughs> it'll be a doubleheader from Austin tomorrow, and we're not talking about the capital of Texas. That's right. Uh, it'll be a lot safer <laughs> <laughs> in peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek. So, uh, Patrick, you get to decide right here, right now, and uh, share your feelings with our listening audience. Do you want to do play-by-play -play on the first game involving the girls or the second game involving the boys? You're really a tough guy to, to deal with sometimes, putting me on the spot. Well, I mean, there's really no consequence of any kind, regardless of what you choose. Yeah, I, I agree. I was just planning on doing the girls' game. Okay. The first Look game. out. Here comes the buzzer. All right. So Warning for everyone there, Roger. Girls it is. You know, the Austin girls are a very good bet to be the top seed coming out of District 26A. Coach Dickerson really has a great group of players, and a lot of them are still young. They had some great freshmen last year who are now sophomores and hoping they don't move to some other uh, boundary. But uh, as long as they're in peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek, things should go well. All right, here we go, beginning the second half. Ridgepoint has a mountain to climb. They're down 30 to 15. T.J. Ford breaks press in the backcourt. Sebastian Sanchez shoots the three from the right corner, but no good. One and done. Dexter Smith grabs the rebound for the Westfield Mustangs, and they move it up with Palomo right in front of his team's bench, far sideline. Dorian Hayes shadowing him, but still about 12 feet away from him. So... There's no real need for Westfield to attack offensively. Now a pass into the center circle for Cooper, who dishes it quickly to Broomfield. I'm sorry, to Jaton Slim Clofer, who scores, and it's 32 to 15. I think that's their biggest lead at 17 points. Sebastian Sanchez, top of the key, three, hit as he shot it. He hit it. That's good, but he didn't draw the foul call. He was knocked down, and I don't think he was faking. 32 to 18 is our score. There is Palomo, meets a double team near the left elbow, drives in, kicks it back out. Cooper tries a dunk, it's no good, but he's fouled. And I think that was a good idea for Logan Menifee to go up and get him. Unfor now, unfortunately for Logan Menifee, his only stat line today so far is he's got three fouls. Well, I remember this guy, I used to be on a, a a little team that represented a television station in San Angelo as Cooper hits the first free throw. And um, there was this, he was this big beefy guy that used to play football at Colorado, had really no basketball skills. And he said, I know my role on this team. I have five hard fouls to give. There you go. Now that's not, I'm not saying that's true of Logan Menifee. As the second free throw by Cooper rattles in and out, he hit one out of two. It's 33 to 18, Westfield on top. T.J. Ford Jr. meets a double team. Bounce pass, gets it in the hands of James Farr. Now there's a side-to-side -side dribble by Dorian Hayes, and he puts up the one-hander. Left side of the free throw lane, no good. Rebound, jinx, and a put-back basket. I think that's the first time it's happened today, Patrick. Ridgepoint gets within 13. Well, that's his uh, second bucket, though. Jinx has had a pretty good, solid game so far. 33-20 to 20 is the score. And now getting away with traveling is Broomfield, and he kicks it back over to Dexter Smith, who hits the two from just beyond the free throw line, and it's 35 to 20. Ridgepoint playing a little quicker tempo now as T.J. Ford quickly gets it into the forecourt, gets a pick from Jinx, gets the ball poked away. Nice steal as Cooper, who is not only tall and long, has those quick hands. He poked it away from Ford from behind. 
And now Jinx is trying to guard Cooper, but he's too much to handle. And he goes up and scores and makes it 37 to 20. That was a nice move. Good footwork by Cooper there to get himself to the other side of the basket and laid it in nicely. Ford across the court to James. James pulls up at the right elbow and Cooper blocks him. That was impressive. Sanchez has it, pulls up along the baseline. Now a three on the way and good from James Farr from far distance. And he hits it and timeout Westfield. It's 37 to 23. The lead is back down to 14. I guess that's the smallest it's been since we started this third quarter. We'll be right back on BikeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Five twenty-four to go in quarter number three. Ridgepoint battling back. They're down thirty-seven to twenty-three to the Westfield Mustangs. This is we're at Lee High School, but this is the Lee College Holiday Invitational Tournament on VitefortBend.com. Two Ridgepoint games today. Westfield attacking on offense. There is Slim Clofer. He misses with a jumper and rebound comes down to Ridgepoint. Dorian Hayes pushing it across the floor. Now he goes into the paint. Pulls up, looking for someone to throw to as he kills his dribble. Now T.J. Ford has it over near the midcourt stripe. Gets a pick from Menifee. Over into the corner is Sebastian Sanchez. Dribbles to the baseline, kills his dribble, and Palomo steals it away. It's a two-on-one. Here comes Westfield. Palomo to the rack and lays it off the glass and good to make it 39-23. to Here comes T.J. Ford. Quickly ahead, James Farr. A three, his second in a row. And that makes it 39 to 26. They get the lead down to 13. Well, I guess for every two that Westfield scores, Ridgepoint can hit a tray and maybe they'll be in business. Palomo guarded by Ford. Far is now guarding Broomfield and nice help side defense. Menifee swatting away the shot and it bounces off of the shooter. It bounced off of Jaton Slim Clofer and so it's going to be Ridge Point possession trailing by 13. Yeah, he uh, shot the ball, was blocked. He landed out of bounds, and the ball landed on him, off of him. Full court press. Ridge Point bringing it up. It's Chauncey Shaw into the game now. He meets defense at the center court circle. Now Menifee near the right elbow, gets it inside to far, but the ball is poked away. And that should be Ridge Point ball, and it is. I don't think they noticed that uh, Dutch Raspberry actually stepped on the line as he touched the ball, but he was not able to throw the ball back in anyway, so it didn't matter. So T.J. Ford looking for someone to throw to. He's deep in the corner, and he gets it into Shaw. Shaw between the rings. Here comes the defense. Aggression by Dexter Smith. Now a little pick helps get him free, and now it's Menifee. Left side, two-pointer along the baseline from about 12 feet. 39 to 28, it's an 11-point game. Here comes Westfield and a whistle. What's going on here? There's a foul there on, on Shaw, I believe. So Ridge Point showing really good effort, battling back here. Dexter Smith gives it up. There goes Raspberry, scoops it, a layup off the glass. They rotate their players very well and they, they get people open for fairly, fairly uncontested layups. And now in the backcourt, there is a foul as Raspberry puts an elbow into Chauncey Shaw. 3.23 to go in quarter number three. It's a 13 point lead for Westfield over Ridgepoint. And the Panthers inbound far side. And now Shaw has it and moves up on Raspberry. Quickly into Far. He's over on the left side now. Gets it inside to Dorian Hayes. And Dorian Hayes misses a shot, but it comes back to him, and he gets the put-back score to make it 41-30. to It's an 11-point game again. Shaw picks up Broomfield. Palomo now has it. Waiting for Far to come out on him. 
They're spreading it out. Palomo steps forward, now backs up, gets the ball to Dexter Smith. Playing a lot of keep away. They're just looking for a really good shot. And Palomo drives toward the hoop, and he's called. Uh, there's a blocking foul called on James Farr of Ridgepoint. It looked like pretty good defense there. He looked like he got to the spot there, but I guess there was a little body contact. So Palomo will throw it in underneath the basket to our left, the one at which Westfield is shooting. And a quick inbounds pass stolen by Ridgepoint. Here comes Hayes all the way through, puts it up. It's no good, but he draws the foul. He went right at a guy who's just come into the game. It's our friend number 21, He's whose not. name is not on our roster. <laughs> the woes of broadcasting sometimes, huh? Well, the, the no roster guy. It makes you really appreciate someone like uh, Kevin Max. I don't think you've met Kevin, but first free throw good by Hayes. It's a 10 point game, 41 31. Kevin Max has been an Elkins baseball fan ever since he was at Elkins High School, and now he's in his 40s, and he's kind of like a sports information director. I never lack for not only rosters, lineups, but also statistical information when I do an Elkins home baseball game. And he even helps me, gives me stats for the ones when Bel Elkins is the road team. All right, second free throw is also good by Hayes. It's a nine point game, 41 to 32. Palomo looking at Hayes. Now he gets it back over on the right wing and he dives, he traveled. He tried to go behind his back. He claimed he was tripped, but the official said, no, that's traveling. And a short timeout called by Westfield. We'll take it with them and be back. Ridge Point within nine, 209 to go in the third. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for next level urgent care. We are back. Ridge Point inbounding. James Farr gets it in to Chauncey Shaw. He shoves his defender out of the way. Didn't get called, thankfully. TJ Ford now has it on the left side. Side to side dribble. Shoots over Palomo from three point land. Rat a tats and goes down through. And all of a sudden, we got a game, Patrick. It's 41 to 35. Westfield brings it into the forecourt as Broomfield has it. Hands it off to Dexter Smith. Guarded by Hayes. They're keeping it on the perimeter, looking for an opening. They still lead by six. Side to side goes Broomfield, gives it off. And a three pointer on the way back iron. No good. Rebound. Dexter Smith missed the shot, and James Farr, or correction, it was Menifee who grabbed the rebound for Ridgepoint. T.J. Ford sends it to Farr on the left wing. Now into Menifee, back to the basket, meets a double team. Turns around, two-pointer too hard off the back iron, no good. Paloma the rebound for Westfield. One minute to go in quarter number three, and Ridgepoint trails by six. Coach Darren Johnson up off the bench, giving instructions. Palomo meets a double team, throws a cross-court pass. Here goes Broomfield. Fakes getting hit, but he does get the whistle that he wanted and a foul on Ridgepoint. I think it'll be a foul on the floor. He made, look, he made the shot there, I think, but it was before the shot. I believe that foul was on Farr. You remember Mel and Miller Farr? One of them was a cornerback for the somebodies in the... One was a running back, I believe, for the Detroit Lions, perhaps. I, I believe I do remember Melfar. Inside Dexter Smith, his shot uh, squirts out. Fight for the rebound, it's bouncing all over the place. TJ Ford quickly gets it ahead to Hayes. Hayes lays it off the glass and good. It's a four point game. 
41 to 37, 28 seconds to go in the third. What a nice pass by, by Ford there. What a great quarter by the Panthers. Broomfield has it. 18 seconds now, Palomo holding the ball over his head, gets it to Smith. Now over here to Broomfield. Broomfield near the top of the key. Pulls up at the left elbow, Cooper. Little fade away from the left side, no good on the two pointer. Menifee quickly ahead to Hayes. Three seconds to go, there goes Hayes to the hoop, lays it in. Wow, it's a two point game, 41 to 39. We got, we got a reason to keep you here on VibeFortMen.com. We'll be back. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 meg... Okay, our little commercial player thing uh, kind of... Gave up the ghost on us. So, uh, sorry, you had to endure silence for a couple of minutes there. I'm going to try and stop that one and close it out and bring up another one. And the next time that I need to play a commercial, hopefully it'll play you the whole thing. By the way, VibeFortBend.com broadcasts of Fort Bend County High School Sports brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, Next Level Urgent Care. The Needville Insurance Agency, First Tire and Automotive, and Xfinity. Xfinity Mobile, the best kept secret in wireless. Wow, great quarter in the third for the Panthers, wasn't it, Patrick? Well, I think it was like the last two or three minutes because they were down by double digits for most of that third quarter, and then they kind of went on a little run there the last couple of minutes. Outscored them 24 to 11. And it's a two-point game, Roger. Westfield gets the ball to start the fourth. Billy Goffney, their head coach, up off the bench, running his guys to really get it in gear. Palomo pulls up, shoots a two, no good. Rebound, TJ Ford of Ridgepoint. Here come the Panthers. Into the forecourt. Ford on Palomo. And he is grabbed on the arm, and I think he was kind of bailed out there as Jaton Slim Clofer grabbed his wrist. And if he hadn't grabbed his wrist, then he was just going to come back down to the floor, and not having shot or passed, and it would have been traveling. So they'll take it out of bounds underneath their own bucket. Gabriel Bro, quick catch and shoot, three-pointer. The Panthers lead, 42 to 41. Now oh. the scoreboard says 41 all. Now they fix it. It's 42-41. That might be their first lead of the ball game, Roger. It sure is. I might not be a smart man, but I do know that. Dexter Smith sends it to Broomfield, moves around, Hayes lays it up, it rattles out. The bounces are going the Panthers' way now as Bro grabs the rebound, gives it to T.J. Ford. T.J. Ford has been not had to shoulder the scoring burden in a big way. It's been a great team effort in this comeback, and now Hayes, three-pointer from the corner, no good rebound, Cooper. Those arms are long, yeah. aren't they? Here comes Dexter Smith moving in on Bro, puts it up, swatted away by Ford, and it goes out of bounds. Ford may not be the best in Texas yet, but he's a very talented player. I guess I should say uh, something about Volkswagen, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Since Archer Volkswagen is our sponsor. 6.46 to go in the game, and the Panthers lead for the first time, 42-41. Now Cooper moving in on Menifee. He draws a double team, gets it to Palomo. Kills his dribble in the paint. Kicks it back out there. Now it is Slim Clover. Hands it off to Broomfield, who I think traveled and got away with it. Trying to move in on Far, and Far elbows him in the ear as he goes by. So uh, that is a justifiable foul call. And bent over at the waist behind the basket is DeBrian Broomfield of Westfield. James Farr comes out, and now the unknown player, number 15, I know it's not Cole Veon. I think he's out of town. Quick shot from the three, from the right corner. The three-pointer is no good by Westfield. And the rebound to the unnamed player. There goes T.J. Ford, splitting two defenders. Spins, scoops, and it's good! Oh, a spectacular!
spectacular shot. He went into the paint, he changed directions, he spun, he was fouled, and TJ Ford scores. It is 44-41, and he's going to the line. If you're uh, Westfield, though, on that play, there was quite a bit of contact prior to the, to the shooting foul that was not called, and you can be a little bit frustrated sometimes at the referees, which foul are you gonna call? And fortunately for the Panthers, he called this one. Three-point play opportunity is good for Ford. You know, I, I think I've seen uh, Ezel Jolly, the Panthers running back, get hammered worse going through a defensive <laughs> yeah, line I on the football field. I agree with you on that. <laughs> Palomo gives it up to Slim Clofer, turns around, shoots from the right elbow. It's short, no good. Rebound comes down to Ridgepoint, the unnamed player. Passes off to T.J. Ford, and a no-look pass is tipped and intercepted by Westfield. Here comes Palomo, gets it to Slim Clofer, spins, gets fouled. Dorian Hayes got him, or number 15 got him. I couldn't tell. You know that lady in the purple windbreaker down there? We ought to ask her if she knows who number 15 is. You know, she's a Ridgepoint <laughs> fan. And I know, Roger, you would have no problem doing that. Whereas I'm a little more timid along those lines. Slim Kofer will go to the free throw line for the first time this morning. And uh, short on that first one. Yeah, by the way, uh, what Slim Kofer is wearing on his legs, basically the, uh, the leotards, those would have been good inside the gym at Brazosport on Tuesday. <laughs> it was less than 60 degrees inside oh the gym. Oh my gosh. And I'm not kidding. And he misses both free throws. And uh, the unknown comic grabs the rebound for Ridgepoint. TJ Ford kills his dribble in the backcourt and now he throws it away. It's a two on one. Palomo scores and that breaks a long drought for Westfield. They get it within 45 to 43. Gabriel Bro in the forecourt. In the midst of three players, puts oh. it up and draws the foul from Cooper. He got him in the air, went up and down came the long arms of not the law, but of Jeremiah Cooper. He he did a good job of uh, suspending himself in the air there to draw that contact, and it was obvious as Cooper was all over him. Do you know how many fouls Cooper has? I've got him for two, but I could be off well, on that. I'm just kind of wondering why they left him off the floor for so long. It might have been simply because they had a big lead, and they know they have another game to play later today. That First could be free throw was. was good by Bro, but he missed the second one. Fight for the rebound on the floor. Westfield comes away with it. Broomfield in traffic, gets it poked away. Bro steals it. There goes TJ Ford into the paint. And it's about to pass to Menifee. Now it's stolen away by Palomo. Both teams with good help side defense. Five minutes to go, Ridgepoint by three. Kick out to Palomo, now Slim Clofer. Hits the three-pointer, and we are tied at 46. Now full court press by Westfield. Hayes spins, kills his dribble, gets it to Bro. Got to hurry. Ford now quickly ahead to the unknown comic. Back to Ford. He's in the paint. Gives it to Hayes. He's blocked by Cooper, but gets it back. Gets it back again. And then Cooper comes down on him and fouls him. And Cooper is claiming... That he got all ball, but uh, yeah, it's you know, funny. I'll tell you what, Hayes is going to live, but that is a foul. He uh, he made really two really good blocks, hands straight up, and then the third block might have been a decent block, but he did, like you said, he swatted it down, and just the look of that swat always seems to draw a foul. And it was the sound too, yeah. as the first <laughs> yeah. free throw missed by Hayes. But I heard this <laughs> from way up here. We're 20 feet above the court. Yeah. at the midcourt line, yeah, and I heard the slap. Sometimes the sound does give it away as well. So Hayes missed the first free throw, but can he break the tie? Yes. 47 to 36. I'm sorry, 47 to 46 with 4.30, well, four and a half minutes to go in the game. Dexter Smith gets it to Raspberry. Raspberry sends it over to Palomo, looking inside. And it is stolen away by James Farr. Nice anticipation. He leaped. He pulled the ball down. Ridgepoint has a one-point lead and the ball. No full court press this possession as T.J. Ford gets it into the forecourt. Bounces it to Farr. Farr looking inside to Hayes. 
And a layup rattles out, no good, but Ford runs down the rebound for Ridgepoint. That was a beautiful play where the ball just did not go down. Hayes trying Whoa. to get it into Menifee. He does, back to the basket. Knocks Palomo down, scores. Oh, and now we boy. have a late whistle boy, oh and boy. an offensive foul called on Menifee. There was a lot of contact prior, again, prior to the, the foul, there was all kinds of bumping and pushing and shoving. And then that's the foul they called. And I believe that's four fouls on Menifee. Okay. I'm sure his older brother Parker is listening and saying, don't commit foul number five. And we got a whistle, something away from the ball here. I guess it's on Ridgepoint. Or maybe uh, there's uh, Westfield wanting to make a substitution. Well, Ridgepoint makes a substitution. Jaden Jinks comes in for Menifee who, as Patrick mentioned, has the four fouls. 47-46, Ridgepoint on top, 3.40 to go, and Westfield with a basketball. Nice little move by Broomfield, but his shot rattles out. He gets his rebound, he goes up strong. Three Ridgepoint players, all with their hands directly toward the heavens, and one of them is called for a foul. I think it was on Jinx, but I'm not 100% sure there. And I got a, really impressed with these guards for Westfield. They are scrappy, including first this shot. guy right here. First free throw by Broomfield is good. He had seven points in the first half, and he just now scored for the first time in the second half. Tied at 47. He's got one more. Broomfield hits it. 48-47, Westfield on top. We got a dandy for you. Didn't look like it would be a dandy for a long time. Here comes Bro up the court, bounce pass into the forecourt to Ford, and he bounces it inside to Jinx, who looked like he was hammered, but Farr oh. grabs the putback. Now it's Jinx. They're really fighting on the offensive board. Jinx saves it near the sideline. Oh, he, uh, he touched the sideline. Boy, his hand just barely touched the sideline. Great hustle, though, by, oh, uh, man. by Jinx there. And like you said, Roger, the, the intensity level has picked up here. And now what do we got here? We got a little conference at midcourt by a couple of the referees. Yeah, two officials are talking to each other. What could they possibly be talking about? Where, where and they? they say it. the ball belongs to Westfield. What was the question I'm, on that? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> he was out of bounds with the ball. Yeah. Unless they... Unless they didn't, I don't understand it, but anyway. Raspberry to inbound for Westfield. The Mustangs trailing. Well, the scoreboard says, okay, yeah, Westfield's up 48-47. And here they are on offense. There goes Raspberry. Bro guarding him, and the ball goes out of bounds. Bro almost stole it, but it's out of bounds. It will go back to Westfield. Dexter Smith to throw it in. And they're telling Jinx and Jaton Slim Clover to stop messing with each other <laughs> or something to that effect. There's a pass into Raspberry guarded by Ford. Westfield leading 48-47. We're under three minutes to go in the game. Dexter Smith trying to drive around Hayes. Now it's inside to Raspberry who traveled. This Ridge Point basketball with 2.50 to go and they trail by one. Now the full court press comes as Farr throws it in. Gets it to Ford, meets a double team, back to Farr. Farr throws it forward to Hayes, back to Farr. Got to get it across the line. Hurry, guys. And now they get it into Bro. Bro drives around his man. And oh. he is fouled. Reach in on the part of Broomfield. That was a pretty good play on his part, but he got a little bit too much body. And uh, Bro will go to the free throw line. And Bro, he was selling it, Bro. He <laughs> really was. He's uh, one for two from the stripe so far this morning. And looks like he's going to have a one and one situation here with a one-point ball game on the scoreboard. He was good at drawing the occasional defensive pass interference call on the football field. And here he draws a foul and goes to the line. And it's a one and one. The first one, good. We're tied at 48. 2.38 to go. He wipes his hands on the side of his trunks. Gets a grip. And it is good. He used, knocked a lot of paint off the rim on that one, but it fell down through, and Ridgepoint has the lead again. 
49 to 48, and here comes Westfield. Broomfield of Westfield, guarded by Bro of Ridge Point. And it's off his foot. It almost went out of bounds, but Broomfield recovered it. Trying to get past Bro. He puts it up. Scoop shot. No good. And we got contact between Jinx and Dutch Raspberry of Westfield. And I guess it's a foul on Ridge Point, or was it simply ball out of bounds? I thought he called a foul, but I didn't see an indication of who it was okay, on. Okay, well, it's a foul on somebody because Raspberry is going to the line with 2.19 left. He's going to the line with six points so far this morning and his first trip to the free throw line in a clutch situation. Yeah, it's not even 11 a.m. How about that? Wow, just almost, though. You know, if we were a regular radio radio station, we'd say we pause 10 seconds for, station. for our stations along the network to identify themselves. <laughs> <coughs> Raspberry. I wonder if they call him Razzie. First free throw good. We're tied at 49. You know, they have those Razzie awards for things that are really bad. There's a lot of competition for that these days. Everybody wants to be bad. Everybody, well, looks bad to me. <laughs> Sounds bad. Raspberry puts up the second one. He swishes it. And now Westfield is back on top, 50 to 49. Ford gets it to Hayes as they battle through the, the full court press. Hayes has to kill his dribble. Gets it ahead to Ford. Nice play. Now it's three on one. Ford scoops it up. He's fouled. He got clotheslined. Cooper, Cooper is the guilty party. I'm trying to figure out why they're upset about that call because it looked like he got hit right across the face. Yeah, and by the way, I borrowed the words of Sam Weish. You know, when they mic coaches in the NFL one time when he was coaching the Bengals, he said, well, he is going to live, but that's a penalty. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, T.J. Ford is going to live to go to the free throw line and shoot two. But uh, Cooper, Cooper did commit a foul there. And we got a 20-second timeout. We'll take it with them on VibeFortBend.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in-store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. Taking care of business every day, even during the holidays, so that Wink can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Well, Patrick is thinking that Cooper fouled out and T.J. Ford is at the foul line, but he missed the first of two shots. Well, he definitely fouled out because uh, they took him out of the ball game with two minutes to play, and I think he pulled his shirt out of his shorts as if to say, I'm done for the day. Now Logan Menifee is back in the game and he won't have Cooper to deal with anymore. Second free throw good by Ford. It is 50 to 50, 2.09 to go. And Westfield with Palomo dribbling the ball up the floor will try to get back into the lead. Ford guarding Palomo, now Dexter Smith, top of the key, kills his dribble. Now it's a long one on the way by Slim Clofer, no good, rebound tapped back out to Slim Clofer. Now it's Dexter Smith in the right corner, passes up the three. Broomfield. Slim Clover. now back to Dexter Smith and the pass is tipped and it's off of Westfield oh out of bounds. The Mustangs don't like the call. They say Ridgepoint touched it last, but the Panthers have it. A 50 to 50 game with 143 remaining. Gabriel Bro to throw it in from the near sideline. Bro's mom works at the school by the way. Ford. Back to Bro, they gotta get it into the forecourt, gotta hurry, long pass to Hayes, they get it ahead. Now Hayes drives to the baseline, draws a double team, turns around, gives it back to Bro. thinks about the three, but passes it up, now gives it back to Hayes, open for three, good look, off the back iron, Menifee fighting for the rebound, he's got it, turns around, puts it up, and good! It's 52 to 50, 1.15 to go, and the Panthers are on top. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com after this from Xfinity. 
Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. All right, so uh, Patrick, you know, you and I always talk about getting together and having lunch during the holidays because we're both school teachers. And I guess uh, if Ridgepoint wins this game, it means their next one is just after 3 o'clock, which means we can take our time having our <laughs> nice little uh, holiday. We better line up the things to talk about. Yeah, oh, we got, that's right, we ought to make a list. Okay. 1-11 to go, and Westfield has the ball. They are down 52-50. to There's a shot in the interior. It's Broomfield going up. He drew the foul, and he's going to the line. Let's see who's coming in for the next game. Not that it matters to our listeners, but the Santa Fe Indians have come in. And over there, is that the team they're well, playing? Somebody the green down here. There's a blue yeah, it could team be them, there. too. All right, uh, Broomfield hits the first free throw. Is now 52 to 51. The unknown player comes out and Menifee comes back in. He was only out for a very short time. So it's Farr, Bro, Menifee, Ford, and Hayes on the floor for Ridgepoint. Second free throw, no good, rebound Bro. Ridgepoint with a one point lead and the ball. And full court press, Hayes gets it into the four court. And we're under a minute to go. Bounce pass to Ford. Goes in, backdoor layup, rattles off, no good. Here comes Westfield, Raspberry quickly ahead, Dexter Smith, his layup is good, and now Westfield leads at 53-52. 44 seconds to go. We're gonna have a fantastic finish. Hayes dribbles into the forecourt, guarded by Palomo. Side to side dribble, clock down to 33. Here goes Hayes into the lane, a little floater oh. off the glass, it's good. Teardrop floater is good. Timeout. Ridgepoint, the Panthers lead it 54 to 53 with 26.7 remaining. We'll be back. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for next level urgent care. By the way, folks, sometimes our Wi Fi gets interrupted, and you may hear some, some brief times of silence. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, sometimes it will skip ahead a little bit. So we apologize for that, but you just never know what's going to happen when you come into an unfamiliar building. All right, Ridge Point leading, 54-53, 22 seconds to go in Westfield, has the ball, Broomfield. Moving in on Hayes. 
Try to get a pick. Now drives to the right side of the free throw line. Puts it up. No good. Oh rattles my out. Goodness. And Rich Point gets the rebound. Hayes has it. And he gets fouled before he can get rid of the ball to Bro. And up off the bench, Billy Goffney, who is complaining to the officials that his guy, Broomfield, got fouled on the way oh to the hoop. Oh, my gosh. What do you think? He got a technical foul on that, too, and that's not a time to get it. He's walking off the floor. Yeah, he's got hands on hips. He's walking on the actual playing floor. He thought and there should be a foul on that last play. Where Was it Broomfield who went in? I believe it was, and look, he's look he threw. Uh, let's see. He's picking up Expo markers. I don't know how they got there, but they were rattling around beyond the baseline. Did Hayes, he, did he get ejected? I ejected, or he did either he just got walk ejected off? or he just decided to remove himself from the fit situation as Hayes misses the first free throw, and that keeps things pretty interesting. With seven point two six seconds to go, Hayes' second technical free throw is good. 55-53, and I think Ridgepoint will get the ball. Well, well now they're going to they, shoot. They still free have. Throws. Uh, T.J. Ford is going to shoot the technicals. And, so, then, and then they'll get the ball. So I correct myself that Hayes shot the foul shots, and now Ford is going to shoot the technicals. First one good. That makes it 56-53. This next one is huge. If you're up by four with seven seconds to go, you're in really good shape. Free throw good. 57-53. Now the Panthers will inbound the basket. Oh, he called a he double did technical. He call two double, two technicals on him. Just lost, that just basically lost the game for him. Well, so much for our fantastic finish. Yep. Ridge Point's going to win going away, 58-53, and another free throw coming. T.J. Ford oh. missed the last one, but I don't think it's going to matter. They've got a five-point lead with seven seconds to go and the basketball. Good job, Ridgepoint Panthers. What a second half comeback it's been. And they didn't have to go to overtime, but before we finish this game, they've got a timeout. We'll be back on VipeFortBend.com. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenau with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Neville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. All right, Ridge Point has called a timeout, and they don't really need to talk about anything in the huddle because they've got a five-point lead with seven seconds to go in this game, and Westfield's coach... Billy Goffney had two technicals called on him. I don't know if he has three for the game. Three for the game is what disqualifies you. But he has left the floor. Yeah, he left the building. And um, now it'll be. The thing is, is at the time, it was a one-point game. Yeah, James so he Farr. Didn't have to James Farr to throw it in and just kill off these final seconds. Gets it into Bro, dribbling it out toward the corner. Three seconds, no defense being played, and there you have it. Congratulations, Ridgepoint Panthers. A great comeback victory. So how far down were they at halftime? They were down by 15 at half, and I believe they were down by 18 at one point early in the third quarter. But they win it by a score of 58 to 53. We will step aside and be back to wrap this one up from Lee High School in Baytown and let you know before we go to this break that there will be more Ridgepoint basketball later. Join us at 3 p.m. and we'll have their game against an opponent, an opponent whom we don't know yet. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, don't go away. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. 
Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Owl to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Back at Baytown Lee High School, where in tournament play, the Ridgepoint Panthers showed tremendous grit. They were down 30 to 15 at the half, and they end up winning it 58 to 53 over a quality Westfield Mustangs team. Patrick, I know you got some stat info that you can share with us and, and how this one ended up going into the win column for the Panthers. Well, we, we discussed it, at least you and I discussed it. It was a 15 point game at halftime, I believe, Westfield was up by as many as 18 early in the third quarter, and then Rich Point, I guess the alarm clock went off, and they got back into the ball game. And some scoring summaries: Sanchez. This is for Rich Point now. Sanchez with five. Della Hose. Della Hose. Imagine Della Hose. Della Reese married Dr. Stephen Hose. He ended up with two. <laughs> he ended up with two. Uh, Hayes, who had three at halftime, ended up with 15. He did a, an excellent job late in the game. Bro with eight. Terrence Ford ends up with 14. Solid game for him. Farr with two big three-pointers in the second half. Ends up with six. Jinx with four. And Menifee with four, who was plagued by foul trouble most of the game. But he was able to contribute quite a bit in the second half, including a couple of buckets. And that's how the scoring went for us. And well, the Rich Point Panthers win by, I believe it was 58 to 40, uh, 58 to 53, right, that's Roger? That's correct. So they they uh, outscored Westfield by 20 in the third and fourth quarters put together. So not sure who Ridge Point is going to be playing at 3 o'clock. It depends on a game that's probably going on right now over at Lee College. We're at Lee High School. But and we will be there to describe that for them. Yes. And we'll... We'll find out who they're going to play yes. at the 3 o'clock time frame. The good Lord willing, we will be able to make the 3-minute, 48-second drive from Lee High School <laughs> to Lee College. But we have some important business to attend to between games, yes, though, Roger. Yes, we, we need to feed our faces. So we want to thank you so much for being with us and wish everybody out there a happy new year in advance. Remember, we'll be talking to you again, 3 o'clock or around that time as Ridge Point plays its second game of the day. And, and i got to say one more time, you consider that they played triple overtime yesterday against, uh, was it Cinco Ranch? They won that one in triple overtime yesterday. Then they got blown out by Beaumont Westbrook in their second game of the day. Went back to Siena. And we're probably able to get back home, I don't know, 9 o'clock at the earliest, and then had to turn around, get back on the bus, and go from Missouri City to out here in Baytown. And they didn't pack it in when they were down by 15 at the half, and they come, come and get their stirring comeback win 
over Westfield. So that's a pretty good start to the day as far as I'm concerned. Anything else that you want to say? I think you said it all, Roger. We will see you later this afternoon for the second game of the Ridgepoint Panthers. See if they can win two today. That would be good. So if you come away from this tournament, three out of four, it's a quality tournament, that would be good. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. You know, you got to play that fourth game in order to win for the third time. All right, so for Patrick Kinnick, our producer extraordinaire, Victor, inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters, Merle Bertrand, Suna Vincat, the rest of the team. I'm Roger Smith saying so long from Baytown Lee High School, where our final score was Ridgepoint 58 and all um, Spring Westfield 53. I started to say Aldine Westfield, which is a road out near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Goodbye for now, and we will talk to you later today.